okeau ikahuli vela kohonua okeau ikahuli lole kalani okeau ikuka iaka kala eho omala malama ika malama okeau makali ika po oko vale vale ho kumo honua ia oke kumo kalipo ilipo ai oke kumo kapo i po ai o kalipo lipo o kalipo lipo o kalipo kala o kalipo kapo po vale ho Over the centuries, Polynesian people developed a culture based on respect for the land, the Aina. They became excellent farmers and fishermen, developing techniques to nurture the land and sustain its productivity. They were also a deeply spiritual people who created mele or chants, practicing malama ika Aina, the desire to take care of and nurture the land giving thanks to the gods for the bounty of the Aina. They understood that to survive, they would need to live off the land by creating what we call today a sustainable environment. Ancient Hawaii was a highly stratified society with strictly maintained castes. The ali'i, or chiefs, headed the social pyramid and ruled over the land. Highly regarded and sometimes feared, the kahuna, or professionals, were experts on religious ritual, canoe building, herbal medicine, and healing. The maka'ainana, or commoners, farmed and fished, built walls, houses, and fish ponds, and paid taxes to the paramount chiefs and their chiefs. A system of laws known as kanavai enforced the social order. Certain people, places, things, and times were sacred. They were kapu, or forbidden. Kapu regulated fishing, planting, and the harvesting of other resources, thus ensuring conservation. Any breaking of kapu disturbed the stability of society. The punishment often was severe and in some cases could lead to death. The people and the land prospered as a sophisticated civilization developed, including the largest network of wetland taro fields and multi-acre fish ponds ever found anywhere in the world. Living in harmony with the land developed into an exquisite art form and generosity in all things, especially in the sharing of food, was considered the highest mark of civilized behavior. Village life was rich and varied. Hawaiians fished in coastal waters and collected shellfish, seaweed, and salt along the shore, and harvested taro and other crops. Men pounded taro into poi, the staple food of Hawaiians while women beat the inner bark of valke, or paper mulberry, into kappa, or bark cloth. They worshipped akua, or gods, and almakua, or guardian spirits. They chronicled their history through oli, mele, and hula. Over several hundred years, the people of Hawaii cultivated traditions that were passed on through generations. But the sounds of taro pounding and kappa beating Rhythmical signatures of Hawaiian village life would fade away after Captain James Cook arrived in 1778 and introduced the rest of the world to Hawaii. Modern Hawaiians revere their ancestors as stewards of the land and sea. Their ancestors were a race who were careful not to overfish reefs, streams, and rivers. The Hawaiians threw away nothing, wasting nothing, utilizing everything in some way. In modern times, man's overpopulation of the islands has negatively impacted the environment and most seriously, the native Hawaiian culture. Extreme consumer habits have added waste and human trash to the landscape as the population's wasteful habits have created a disposable society. We must ask, why has this happened? In recent
recent modern times, technology has grown at such an exponential rate that we are capable of literally creating anything we desire. Man has been able to conquer all aspects of his existence, such as food production, mass transportation, health, medicine, and leisure activities. By doing so, we have come head to head with unintended consequences. Results from our actions that we have not fully intended and do not yet understand. In our desire to create the ultimate lifestyle, we have created a disposable society. We have thrown caution to the wind in striving for our ultimate goal of leisure. The unintended consequences of our actions have brought about a system of marketing and delivery that utilizes a deluge of packaging, wrapping, containers, and byproducts that pollute the air, water, and landfills and negatively impact our homes and the surrounding environment, leaving behind a trail of debris and discarded rubbish. Malama uh, means to us protect, defend, take care. Malama Ka'aina uh, lies in the love of the land. Yeah? If you love your land, you're going to protect them. If you love your land, you're going to defend it. You know, if you love your land, you're going to take care of it. Yeah? So, what a lot of the uh, Hawaiians have done, and the guys prior to our generation, and before then, was, was to lay this foundation of Aloha Aina. So when you understand Malama Ka'aina, you can take care of the things that take care of you. People that have lived here all our lives and we've seen changes happening. And yes, it goes back to our spiritual feelings that uh, the Aina is, plays a very, very important part in our lives. I think a lot of people here in Hawaii, especially uh, the native Hawaiian people, have been uh, put upon by outsiders. Uh, enculturated by you know the American system and a lot of them have felt displaced from the land the ownership of the land Hawaiians never owned land but they felt connected to it a lot of native Hawaiians don't a lot of local people don't with the high prices of housing with you know it's hard to actually connect with the land ancient Hawaiian life was a difficult and physical way of life but there was a collective responsibility People belong to the land. The land did not belong to the people. People farmed the land and fished the sea in a collective way because they saw the land and sea as common resources. Resources that were provided by Akua, or God. These resources belong to Akua. The use of the land and sea were simply administered by the Ali'i and Konaiki as stewards of God's creation. Today, the impact of our wasteful habits, and especially illegal dumping, can be measured in very real, tangible ways. As a blight on the landscape, as a hazard to our safety and health, and as a negative factor in the development of tourism and the economic base for our community. I come from a time when this was not a problem, but as for sometimes in the 50s, it started in the 60s, 70s, 80s, the problem illegal dumping just got worse and worse. Maybe it got, it was in tune with all of the plastic things that were being sold, fast foods and everything. And not to blame them, because obviously the ultimate blame is us as people, just disrespect for what we do with our garbage. In the late 90s, the illegal dumping of automobiles, white goods as we call it, refrigerated stoves, and almost everything that you can buy at the store was being dumped. Uh, total disrespect for people's land, water, and everything else. There's no question that whenever you have illegal dumping and trash, you know, in these beautiful remote places, it does affect everybody. It affects local people, tourism, it does affect, yes. Who wants to come and visit a place that is trash? Who wants to live in a place that is trash? You know, the term illegal dumping is an interesting one. It's a focus on the problem in regards to what is the impact of illegal dumping on our community. It's almost asking the same question of what is the impact of trash in your home? And that's what we're talking about. You know, we are and we have been trashing our home. 
Uh, home includes everything that we touch of air, of water, of trees, obviously of land. And the uh, question is, does it impact the island? Does it impact the economy? It impacts every single thing we touch. Safety and health are immediate issues with dire consequences for those most vulnerable amongst us, our children. It is a health hazard. It can certainly be. It can be a safety issue, broken glass. Just uh, if kids are playing in, out in the country or on the side of the road, they can get cut. Or if it's an abandoned vehicle and there's fluids leaking, that's a big concern protecting the uh, groundwater. Tires with uh, West Nile virus, you know, these are, there's a lot of issues because you don't really know what you're dealing with. I just retired from the state health department here on the island for the last 20 years and uh, I'm always interested in diseases like infectious diseases and uh, particularly I'm interested in uh, mosquito-borne diseases like West Nile and dengue and these are breeding grounds for these kind of mosquitoes. Uh, mosquitoes that carry these viruses exist on this island and all they need to do is get infected and uh, they don't grow in the rivers and streams. No, they produce in illegal dump sites, especially around tires and all anything that can accumulate uh, water. That's the breeding ground for these kinds of mosquitoes. Things like automobiles and ice boxes, which are left on the side of the road, um, can attract children who can easily lock themselves in the car or lock themselves in the ice box and or be hurt by um, glass or other sharp pieces of metal that are in an illegal dump site. They can pose certain health hazards to the community as well depending on the types of materials that are disposed. Antifreeze, brake fluids, it can contain batteries which um, have toxic material in them, mercury switches, tires, other types of what we consider special or potentially toxic waste. There are also intangibles that no studies or surveys can measure. The actual impact that a degraded and dangerous environment poses on the psyche of individuals and a community can only be inferred. Pride and respect are internal barometers that measure the spiritual health of people. Abandoned vehicles, scattered trash, dumped appliances, randomly discarded medical waste and hazardous materials say to those living in the community, we don't care about ourselves, our children, or our community. Under such conditions, there is little pride in oneself or one's environment. I think everything is a, a state of mind. It's what you believe to be true that reflects your, what you do. If you have a poor state of mind, then you will do a poor state of things. You're going to do dumping and stuff like that. If you're in a good state of mind, um, meaning that you, know, you understand, you have relationship to the land, you understand those things, uh, you will be less prone to dumping. People of all nationalities in Hawaii, because they live here, are, are, are respecting and finding more value in the host culture, which is Hawaiian. And to me, that means the aloha spirit, kindness, uh, finding value in um, relationships, um, and, and, and it also goes to keeping Hawaii clean. Reduce, reuse, recycle, I want to say it again. Reduce, reuse, recycle. At times, the problems we confront as a community seem insurmountable. Some will say we should enforce the laws already on the books or exact stronger penalties for those caught dumping their rubbish illegally. We have adequate re regulations. We need uh, more enforcement. I think more signs, more law enforcement. I know we're strapped for, for patrolmen, and we do have signs out there. It's a fine, you know, but if you turned them in, I don't think there would be anything done. They're too busy doing other police work. The fines are certainly heavy enough, but there's no enforcement of the fines. I've lived here for 25 years and I've never heard of a single person having to pay a fine for littering. Manpower that could be used to confront and solve other pressing problems in the community is diverted and the issue of illegal waste starts to become more of an enforcement problem unnecessarily draining local enforcement resources. 
As far as enforcement, I think there's many more things that need to be done. It's uh, tricky and we can't always catch the people who are doing it sometimes at this point because the, the, the area that we're talking about, thousands of square miles in this island with a very small police force, very remote areas without anybody being able to witness it. Is that situation going to change in the near future? We hope so. Um, our department is pursuing um, positions that would help with the problem of the illegal dumping. They haven't been created yet, but we are pursuing um, the idea of creating an investigative branch within our department that will assist the public in dealing with illegal dumping. Actually, I really don't think that what's required is additional resources for enforcement. I think what's required is additional emphasis on education and on public awareness because it doesn't matter, you know, how many citations we give or how many cases we generate, how many people that we arrest if if the majority of the people think this is how things are done and this is acceptable, we'll never be able to make a difference. It's really a social cure. In ancient culture here in the island, the community didn't allow you. It was kapu for you to do those type of things. If you participated in that kind of disregard for the aina, you know, you were ostracized. In the Hawaiian culture, the concept of waste is somewhat foreign because you were using all of your waste stream in a productive manner. I believe it starts at home. It starts with each and every one of us that the choice, the buck stops here. The choice is with me. Uh, when I shop, uh, where I spend my dollars, the companies that I support, the packaging that I buy, and what I do with that after I've purchased it. Uh, I think it's important for each of us to realize that we have those kinds of choices. And until we do, there's not going to be any change. If we're always waiting for someone else to change or for them to do it, it's never going to get done. It starts at home. It starts with the way I handle my life, where I spend my dollars and the choices I make. Others will say, we need more community projects directly confronting the issue, such as local cleanups and beautification projects. Anybody want a hot dog? One bag of garbage, one hot dog. The only way we can address the problem right now is once a year we have our annual pickup. We time it for Malama Aina Day, which is declared by the mayor. We started this about six years ago. We call it heavy metal. And basically what we're concentrating is on the large appliances. It really helps our community. We should do it that way and not infringe on our people on their privacy or anything, but to, to go there and, you know, just help them out. You know, come by, hey, bro, um, you get rubbish for dump. You get stuff you like um, give to the recycle center. You know, help our people who don't uh, have a truck or the truck is illegal. They can't, you know, they can't even go to the dump without getting a ticket. If you don't do that kind of things, we're just fooling around. You know, and just blaming other people because they're poor. You know, we, we got to get into something more positive, you know, and helping our community that way. We need to have uh, people in their communities picking up their own garbage. I think that when people clean up a corner, it stays clean for quite a while. We've had to clean one corner for, I think I've been doing it for eight years, but I drove by yesterday and it was clean. I commend the Chamber of Commerce because they have done a great lot. They, they've set up Malaim Aina Day once a year to get all the, your big trash and appliances brought down to the market down here so that you can get rid of it. So you don't have to drive 80 miles out of your way to get rid of it. I just got so excited because I have so many things that I just can't call a dump, you know? And, uh, so I feel really good. My yard's a lot cleaner and uh, I'm a happier person. Local nonprofit organization Recycle Hawaii facilitates an ongoing educational program administered throughout the County of Hawaii that makes its resources available for presentations, workshops, and seminars in schools, businesses, and organizations. Uh, we have many facets in the programs that Recycle Hawaii addresses. Uh, uh, mostly 
focusing on the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. We run a do-it-yourself oil change program for folks who uh, change their own oil. We provide collections around the island as a service in uh, helping to keep used oil out of the land. Uh, we also provide educational services and outreach uh, for the County of Hawaii by sending out educators in North, East, and West Hawaii on demand to all the local schools and also business organizations uh, to address these groups on uh, recycling issues, recycling education. There are those who would say we need more government action through state and county administered programs. Uh, we have uh, several organizations that um, sponsor illegal dumping cleanups on an annual basis such as Malama Opuna and uh, we have organizations in the Ocean View area that have begun doing annual cleanups in their area as well. In fact, we're putting together a list of nonprofit and community groups who can assist in organizing um, these community cleanups under the Matson's Ka Ipu Aina program. Now we've set up an amnesty program for derelict vehicles, which means basically it will never run again. It's, uh, there's criteria for a derelict vehicle. It's over 10 years old. It has no wheels. It has no motor. You know, basic sorts of things where uh, it's sitting. But if it's on private property, each property owner can apply for up to two cars off of two vehicles off of their property and then they have to sign an affidavit that says yes I can verify the ownership and I don't want it here and please tow it away and it will be free um, and that's part of I, I really feel like the planets have collided in our favor because the scrap metal market is good right now so it's time to um, you know make hay while the sun's shining on that one When we make a purchase, we choose with our dollars to support the manufacturer of that product and all the company stands for. It is wise to consider the manufacturer's participation as a responsible steward in the manufacturing of that product, the product packaging, and its method of delivery and consumption. Manufacturers would not continue to market non-sustainable products and packaging if we did not continue to purchase and support the proliferation of their products. I think it's important to understand when you spend your dollars, you say to the manufacturer that we agree with your practice. And if you didn't spend the money on those particular, whatever those particular products would be, they wouldn't be made. It's as simple as that. It's simple economics. And I don't think a lot of people realize they have that kind of power. Each of us holds the key to the solution of our environmental problems. We can choose how we interact with and impact our environment. Plastic has a shelf life of about 2,000 years. So when you make a plastic casing for a computer or a television, after we're done using that TV for an average of three to five years and dispose of it, that plastic carcass stays around for the next couple of thousand years unless something is done with it and it's reclaimed. I believe that manufacturers would approach manufacturing much differently if they were re required to take back the products they sold at the end of their life cycle. We, as responsible stewards, can make informed choices concerning the waste from products that we purchase. Buying recyclable and reusable glass and metal containers. Corrugated cardboard products and packaging that are recyclable. Composting when possible. Buying items in bulk rather than individual packages, and shopping for alternative products that are less hazardous to personal health, products that are created with earth-friendly environmental consequences in mind. Each of us can learn to recycle aluminum, glass, paper fiber, plastic, motor oil, batteries, cooking oil, inkjet and toner cartridges, magazines, packing peanuts and yard debris, and encourage our family, friends and neighbors to do the same. Before sustainability was introduced as a concept defining our symbiotic relationship with the environment, the native Hawaiian people instinctively understood and lived in balance with all life in these islands. This balance, this harmonious relationship, is called lokahi, stewardship of this beautiful aina, this beautiful land, 
is a sacred trust handed down from generation to generation. For native Hawaiians, there is no separation between the land and the people. They honor and revere all life upon the land, in the sea, and in the heavens. Our Hawaiian kupuna wisely suggests we simply return to the cultural philosophy of Malama Ikaaina and Lokahi, an understanding that we are all connected to the land, and that collectively we should care for this abundant gift that Akua has freely given us. Your involvement, your care, you know, for Aloha Aina becomes Malama Kaina. Yeah? The love is Aloha Aina. But the care and the take care is Malama Kaina. They're verbs. You know, they're not nouns, they're not passive, they're not adjectives. There's, you gotta do, you know, it's, it's like the raw out of Kamehameha. It's not a name. It's an order <laughs> from his mouth. You know, we just name, we put it in, in words. The raw out of Kamehameha is take care of my people. You know, watch, watch over them in the land that we, you know, the ancestors give you. So, hey, we gotta do those things. We as a society must learn to be responsible stewards of the Aina. With this in mind, it would serve us well to weave together a cohesive plan of action, remembering that what is of paramount importance is that each individual take action in his or her own small way. The solution to this problem begins with our individual awareness and continues with an ongoing commitment to a clean and safe environment for all. These are the first steps to an abundant future. For all of us today who now call Hawaii home, we have much to be thankful for. The responsibility to be good caretakers for this precious island environment is ours, and ours alone. E malama ia ka aina, a me ko ka aina pū ke kai. If you really love your city and you want to keep it pretty, listen to this little ditty. Put Opala in its place. When you cruise around the Aina and you know nothing could be finer, a little litter isn't minor. Put Opala in its place. Got to take that take extra, that step. extra step. Be a Kamai now. You can do it. There's nothing to it. All you gotta do is really try now. And if you really love your eye now, and you know nothing could be fine now, a little litter isn't mine now. Put Opala in its place. Got to take that extra, extra step. Be a Kamai now. You can do it. There's nothing to it. All you gotta do is really try now. So if you really love your eye now, and you know nothing could be fine now, a little litter isn't mine now. Put Opala in its place. So pick up that Opala whenever it's found on the ground all around. Hey, aluminum cats are a quarter of a pound of snow Hawaii cakey that you know how to keep our beautiful Ina from becoming Pilau. So put it, put it, put it in its place. I don't know why they all out going to be drowning in our ways. Let's keep it nice and clean out here in the Pacific because living in paradise sure is terrific. Ah, say.